Hi right, guys, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this ruffle skirt. And as you can see, the top part is um, not ruffled. There will be the part that fits around the hip, and then when it gets down to about the leg, then it starts to become this ruffle skirt. And this is made for my five-year-old daughter um, and every size kid at this age. Every kid this age is a different size. Uh, she's got friends that are, are bigger than her and some that are smaller. So um, this project can actually be made for adults as well. It can be made for anybody. To be able to make this project, I would suggest you be intermediate in crochet because uh, everyone's different. I can't give you a direct pattern and say this is going to fit a toddler or a child and it actually fit them because you have to have this fit the person. So what I did is you measure the size of the hips of the person you're making the skirt for, child or adult, and this should be the widest point. And once they get it on, they pull it up to their hips, this part here I've done some reducing so that it fits a little bit tighter and I'm going to be going to my mother-in-law and put this this in. You don't want this top part to be too tight. See it still has stretch on the top so they can get it on but with this uh, elastic here it will tighten it to them. I have it marked here where um, it needs to be sewn. I'm guessing it needs to be sewn there. Uh, I'll know better when I uh, go see my seamstress. So I'm not a I'm not a seamstress, so I don't know. She may even want to make it tighter. So we shall see. And I will uh, update you on this video if uh, she does need to reduce it. But for now, I'm going to show you how to make this part. And I started it here, so we'll start making the skirt from this way. And then when we're done making the whole skirt, then you make this band. That way you can adjust it yourself. Um, you know, if you need to do a row or two and do reduction uh, and re do reducing in the first row, and then check it on them, see if it's getting closer to their hips. I mean, their waist size, and then reduce it if you need. So it's, it's really uh, flexible. So you can definitely make it fit anybody that you want. But just make sure you don't get this too, too tight because they, they need to walk. So, so having said that, I used variegated uh, worst weight, um, which is 4-ply yarn for the U.S., 10-ply for Australia. And I also used white. So I did four rows using the variegated, then I did a row of white, and then four rows of variegated, then I did white. And I did the same thing for the skirt here. I did four rows of variegated, and then I would do a row of white. So what you're going to need for this project is a five millimeter hook. And for this toddler size skirt, I used three skeins of variegated and one skein of this white. So a total I used four. So if you're using it for an adult or something, then uh, you're definitely going to need more than that. Most of the yarn is used here on the bottom because your rows just get more bigger and bigger and bigger and longer and longer and longer. Not bigger, but longer. Anywho. So what I did to get started it's like I said, you're going to have to make the chain and uh, measure and everything. For my daughter, I chained 78 multiples of 3 and then plus 1 because I need to make the connecting chain. So you need to use a number divisible by 3 because each of these stitches, the top ones here and the ones below, are in 3's. So for my daughter's skirt, I chained 78 and then I fit it around her waist to make sure that uh, it was still going to be loose, not too tight. And once you make your first row 
of the clusters, check it on the person who you're making the skirt for again. Make sure that it's a good fit, that it's not too tight to where they can't really walk around in it, but uh, it's not going to be too loose either. So for the purposes of this tutorial, like I said, it's in multiples of three. So I went ahead and I changed 28 and plus one because I'm going to do my connection. So I'm going to make sure my chain is not twisted. And then in the beginning chain here, just for the connection purposes, I'm going to go into the bottom of the stitch, leaving two up on top. And I'm going to do my slip stitch. Then you want to chain one. And for our first row, we're going to go ahead and start by doing a row of single crochets just to have our base. And now for the remainder of the stitches here, we're only going to be going through the top, leaving the two at the bottom. And this chain that we're working with now, we're going to be working the other side of it when we start our rim. So once you get your chain done, I'll see you back here at the beginning. Okay, when you get to the end here and uh, you're not sure which is your first stitch, how many you have, count your stitches here. Make sure you have the number that you need. My 28th one is here and I want to stick with my 28 stitches. This is my chain one that I did. I'm going to go ahead and go into the same space that I began my first connection when I only went through, when I only grabbed the one down here at the bottom, had the two at the top. I'm going to do that again. Go into that same exact stitch and slip stitch again just to keep this area flatter. And then I'm going to chain one and in my first stitch here I'm going to go in, pull up a loop, pull through only two loops, yarn over, go into the same stitch, pull through two loops. Goodness, sorry about that. Coughing this morning. Okay, you so you have two half double crochets, not half double crochets, just two unfinished double crochets in the first stitch. Then you want to yarn over and now going, going into the next stitch, you want to do the same thing. Only pull through two, yarn over, go into the same stitch, pull through two. If you've ever done my cluster hat, this is exactly the same. So you have two unfinished in one stitch and two unfinished in the second stitch. Now you want to do it one more time for a third stitch. So in your third stitch, go in, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go into the same stitch, and pull through two. Two, four, six, seven. You have seven loops on your hook and two in eight, two unfinished double crochets and three stitches. Now once you're at this part, you want to yarn over and pull through all of the loops. And then you want to chain two. Now using the very next stitch, no need to skip, go into, you yarn over and go into that stitch. Go through only two loops, yarn over, go into the same stitch, pull through only two loops. Now moving on to the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, go into the same stitch. Again, we have two, two stitches of two unfinished double crochets. And we do it again in the very last one, putting two unfinished in this one. Again, seven loops on the hook, pull through all seven loops and chain two. And I'll show you the next one again, but in slow motion.
Okay. So you want to continue to do this, and depending on what size you're making, you'll have different uh, clusters. I can count how many I have here. For my daughters, it looks like I have uh, 24, or 24, or 26, 26 clusters on mine. But like I said, it doesn't matter. Everybody's probably going to be making different sizes. You can make it for babies or full-grown adults. It'll be different for everyone. To stay in multiples of three and continue working your clusters all the way around until you get back up to the beginning. Okay, I'm here at the end. And my last stitch here, I only have two. I had it on my first uh, skirt I made too. But it's okay. It writes itself after this first. So I'm only going to pull through the four. And I'm going, when you end a row and you're going to be doing a connection to your next cluster, to make it a more even connection, what you do is instead of chaining two, you chain one. And then you come on to this top section where you did your first chain on your connection. And you pull through all your loops and then you chain one. It creates this hole at the top of, the cl of your clusters. And this is the hole here that we're going to be slip stitching in at the end of a round. So you want to skip this first long stitch here, go right into the very top, and then slip stitch. And that's going to make a clean separation. You won't even be able to tell. So to start the next round of clusters, and also see, just like the rest of them, because you only chained one. Now in this space right here, where we slip stitched, that's the space we're going to be working in. And then I told you in uh, my cluster beanie that I did, the pretzels, um, the pretzel shape, how each pretzel will have two small holes on top and then one in the, the bottom. We're going to be working in the top left of our pretzel to begin our clusters. Because clusters are done in three, using three stitches. So we want to go ahead and chain one, yarn over, and go into this space. And then start our first part of our cluster by only going through two, yarning over, go into that same stitch, go through two. Now, the second part of our cluster is worked into the top where we slip stitched to end our round. So work the next part of the cluster there, putting your two half, I mean your two half unfinished double crochets there, and then the last one we're we're going to be using this big space to finish. So put your last two in there. So now we have our seven loops on our hook, and then uh, chain two at the end. Pull through all seven loops, chain two. Again, we're going to be working into this space, which is like the left part of the pretzel, left top. Just go into that very next space and start your cluster there. Put your two stitches in there. And again, above the cluster itself, use that stitch for the middle part of the cluster. The last one, last part, you use the big hole there. Then you pull through all seven loops and chain two. And I'll show you the next one in slow motion.
and you want to continue to do this all the way around and then when you get back up to the beginning again again at the end of the, the row you want to only chain one instead of chaining two like you've done for the rest of the stitches you only want to chain one and you'll want to slip stitch in the top stitch of the clusters now for mine I did a total of ten rows so depending on who you're making it for how wide their hips or their butt is because this part is basically I did to to fit over the, the hips and the butt and then it comes down on my daughter's legs about here and then I start my ruffle so depending on how tight of a skirt you want uh, you may want to start your ruffle earlier or make this part longer if you want a long skirt so it's up to you I did 10 rows so make your rows exactly like that until you've gotten your desired length and then I'll show you what you do to start the bottom part of the skirt Oh, when you get back to the end of your row and uh, you had that two smaller uh, cluster here, this is the space that you work in every round anyway. So what you do is just add finish your stitch here using the space. In case you were wondering if you use that space to finish your stitch to make it complete, you do use that, that space that we made. Then pull through all seven chain one only and then slip stitch into the top skipping this section slip stitching here top of the cluster and then when you're ready to start the round again you just repeat it again you just chain one and use this space here that we made when we slip stitched just now so we're going to be using this one as the first part of the stitch then this is the middle and always the big space that's the third part of the stitch okay um, like I said go ahead and continue that uh, but for the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to go ahead and show you how to start the bottom part of the skirt when you're ready to make the ruffles when you're ready you want to go ahead and chain one just like you normally would except instead of going into this back stitch to start your cluster you want to start doing a single crochet into the same stitch that you just slip stitched into and then you want to use your space here for the single crochet and then where we usually start the first part of our cluster you want to put a single crochet then again on top of your clusters and then in the big space You're going to be putting a single crochet in all these stitches that you were using to make your clusters so continue to single crochet all the way around and I'll see you back here in a moment okay I just finished my rows of single crochets and I counted my stitches and I now have 29 stitches instead of 28 but it doesn't matter for the bottom part of the skirt you're going to be adding uh, more stitches and it's not going to affect the pattern at all so I'm not going to be from here on out telling you how many stitches I have per row because it's just going to keep adding and it's going to be crazy you won't even be counting there's going to be so many so having said that to start the ruffles you want to go in to the first and slip stitch and you want to chain one now to do the ruffles you're going to be using both sections of your stitch let me get just a little closer here so when you're you're going to be doing three double crochets using the back stitch of your uh, stitch so going into this very first stitch where we slip stitched and chained one you're going to be going into the back loop only and doing a double crochet and again the next stitch using the back loop only do a double crochet the next one as well back loop only do a double crochet now we have three front stitches unused we're going to be using those now so using the first one here going to grab it with your hook because it's just the easiest way to get a hold of it and then you're going to do a double crochet using 
the front loop only. And again, the next one, grab it up and do a double crochet in that one. Then the final one, front loop only. So now you have three double crochets worked in the back stitch and three double crochets worked in those front stitches that you skipped. And I'll show you that again. For this round, we're going to be using every stitch for the first round of the ruffles. So go in through the very next stitch, do a double crochet using the back loop only, leaving this front loop to be used in just a moment. Go into the next stitch, back loop only, double crochet. We're going to be using double crochets only this for the ruffles. Again, the back loop only, put a double crochet. And now once you've got your three double crochets, you want to start going in through the front stitch. Grab a hold of it with your hook. Do a double crochet. I know it's kind of difficult but you will get used to it. Just going through like this. And then now you have your three front double crochets and your three back used in the three in the back, three in the front stitch. And then the next one I'll show you in slow motion. And there you go. And the stitch comes out looking like this. I know it's difficult to see, but you have, you kind of have them running different directions, but they, because they, it gets wider as you go along. See how you can see it like this? And then when it gets down to the bottom, it kind of separates out, and you can see how it has little lines of them going down just slightly over to the side. Kind of hard to see on this camera in this bright light. You'll see it on your own project when you get a few rows going. Anyway, continue to do this, working three double crochets and using the back stitch only in the next three stitches. And then going back to the first one that you skipped and doing double crochets using the front stitches. And I'll, I'll see you back here when you get to the end of your row. Okay, I'm at the end of my row and I have two stitches left. And it will be the same from now on. If you have two, if you have one, if you have three, doesn't matter when you get to the end of the row how many of your stitches you have left. You'll go if you have one, let's say, before the end of your row, you do your double crochet in the back stitch and then you'll just go ahead and go in through the front stitch immediately. If you have two, then you'll do two double crochets at the end and then you'll go back in the front of the first double crochet that you did and then go into the front stitch the second one. 
when you get to the end, it's not too terribly important how many you have left, as long as it's uh, three or less. So, when you get to the end of this row, this is the chain one that you did, and then this is the first. It's hard to see the chain one. Chain one's down here, small. And then this is the top of your first double crochet. Go in through under both loops and do a slip stitch. And then chain one. Now, for the second row of your ruffles, you're going to be doing it a little different. You're going to be starting off the same. You're going to go into that same stitch. You just slip stitched in two and you chained one. And you're going to do your first double crochet. And then the next one, do it also as normal. Going through those front stitches. Do your double crochets. And the part where it changes is from this round until you get to your very last round of the skirt, which is this one. From here on out, you're going to be working the ruffles like this. After your first initial one of the round, you want to skip two stitches. So one, two. And then the third stitch, you'll do your cross stitch double crochets. So you'll do your three, then go back again to the front stitches. And then again, you'll want to skip two and then start your stitches again. And you're going to continue to do it like this until the skirt is as long as you like for the person, for the bottom. Back up just a second. See here, this was my next row that we do, which is you skip two before you're starting your next section. And you'll continue to do this for as long as you like. I did a total of four rows with the uh, variegation yard. Then I did a row of white. Then I did four more rows. And then my, for your very last row, you'll do it like you did your very first row. You won't skip two. You'll use every stitch. You'll go in, you'll do the three double crochets using the back stitch, then do three double crochets using the front stitch, and then going into your very next stitch. Don't skip any. And keep going, and you'll get this really ruffled end to finish off your, your skirt. So make it as long as you want using the method of skipping two in between. And then once you're ready, you make your very end. And that's it uh, for the skirt. Then when you're ready to do the top part, what you do is with my daughter, obviously it was, uh, it's wider here on the hips than it is on the top. So what I did is I go in, this was the first chain that you did and you used you were going this way and you used just the top of the stitches leaving the other two stitches at the bottom now when you're working the top of the skirt you'll be using just single top as well single crocheting in each of those you'll attach your yarn and I, I like to attach it next to the the back where it began. So here was my end. So I will attach it going in through only that top stitch and then doing a single crochet connection like this. For my daughter I did five regular single crochets four and five and every fifth after the fifth single crochet 
I would do a decrease. Then I do another five and then I do a decrease. And at the end of it, I checked it on her to see how the waist would be compared to hers. And it was good. You, you may want to dec decrease more often. So maybe you want to do three single crochets before you do a decrease. And if it's coming out too tight, then the five, I should say the five single crochets, if they're coming out too tight, then maybe you want to single crochet seven and then do a uh, decrease. The farther apart the decreases are, the less decreases that you're doing that round. And the closer that the decreases are, the smaller that your project will get. So if it's too big on the person's hip, do more fre frequent <laughs> decreases, like try after every three. If five works, it's great. If not, then it's getting too, too um, small, then do a decrease after every seven. And uh, like I said, I had to undo this one a few times because it's really important that you get this part here right. So once you do your first rows of your decreases and it fits good, then just do no more decreases because it's important that you get the size that you want in your first row before you, you do it all so that it all stays consistent. So you definitely need to have the person around. And I marked, I got my little elastic here around her waist. And then I pulled it just a little tighter, you know, where it would be snug around her. Not too snug, of course, but where it would actually, you know, use the elastic to hold against her body. And that's where I marked it. So this is where it would be, where it would be tighter against her. She's a little bigger than this, just a little. So that way it'll hold firm onto her, her hip, I mean her waist. So I really uh, suggest you get this. And I got it in white. I had an option of black or white. I got white. And that's the color that I used on my band so that when you get it inside, it's not going to really show. And I also, I did mine for six rows because as you can see, it fits over about five and then you can see the holes here where there's an extra. So when you sew it, you'll have a little room. So if yours is wider or smaller, maybe you don't want to do so many rows of single crochet. It depends on your elastic band that you, you have. And I'm going to go ahead and have my seamstress uh, sew mine in. I have a feeling she, maybe she'll connect it on one side and then connect it on the other and then maybe sew in and I don't know. I'm not a seamstress. But I will try to videotape her doing it if I can or get more information and then I'll add it to this tutorial to help you out. So that's it. That's how I made the skirt. Hi guys. So I took the skirt to my mother-in-law who's a seamstress and I'm going to describe the best I can uh, about what she's doing. She took the, the elastic band and she measured it from one end to the other and then she folded it in half to the other side of the skirt. And then she cut it. So this is the exact size of the skirt right now. But then she, she gets a pen and she shrinks it she said by three centimeters from down. She shrinks it and she puts uh, a pen to mark it so that it doesn't move when she's trying to sew it. She's changing out her yarn from black to white right here. Okay, then she uh, takes the pin out and she goes ahead and starts to sew. Sorry, I'm trying to find a good position. She starts to sew across that first connection and kind of a, a Z pattern just across that overlapping part. Then she cuts off the excess.
She's cutting off the excess of the flap that didn't get sewn. Because she's made enough uh, sewing connections part here. It's not going to come unraveled by cutting the excess flap. Okay, then what she does is she decides, okay, this is the back of the skirt. So she decides uh, to pin it. She pins it to the back, which gives her her base. And then she cuts it in half. I mean, cuts it. She folds it in half so that she knows it's even and that this is the place the front really needs to go. That's the middle. And then now we know these are the sides equally. So she'll, she puts her pins there equally as well. So she's got the front and the sides marked where the elastic needs to go. So then she pins it to the skirt. First she does the opposite side, which would be the front of the skirt. The back and the front side together to make sure that the side is going to be even. And she'll take her pin and pin it into the crocheted. So that's one side. And then she makes sure that it's even to pin the elastic part on this side. So when she starts to sew, it's all going to be even. And so when she starts to sew, she uh, is going to start at the back where she uh, put the back of the elastic. And she's going down one row of uh, the crochet row. You can still see that part of one crochet row sticking out. She's making sure she starts. You have to pull it snug so that the elastic will snap back. And she sews just the top to her pin. Then she removes it, pulls it tight again. Her hand is where the next pin is. So she pulls it to the next pin and sews it to where her next pin is. Your fingers are there by the pin. She just makes sure that it's going to be pulled where she's sewing. And she does it again. She gets her hands where the next pin is, pulls it, making sure she's one row of crochet rows down so that the elastic band doesn't stick up and she sews it to the next pin. to the back of the skirt again, but this time she's going to sew going along the bottom of the elastic band. And she tugs a little, but not as much as she did before. She's just slightly tugging it to make sure that it's still going to keep its, you know, elasticity until she gets to where her hand is. She's just slightly tugging to keep it taut.
So that's it. I hope you like this tutorial. Please don't forget to like this video and please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.